So it's no surprise that the inventory or the supply of homes in the Phoenix area is up significantly year over year. Um, You could call it a spike. You could call it a rush of inventory. You could call it a crash. But is it something to be concerned about? That is the question. Um, You know, I'm not sure. I'm not sure that it's something that should be that concerning yet. But we're going to talk about the numbers because they are striking. It does sound a little scary, especially if you're just reading a headline. So Let's dig into it. Thanks for joining me today. Um, So this is the active listing weekly counts compared year over year. Uh, The purple line is where we're at today, about 15,895 homes on the market. Last year at this time, we were at about 10,000, give or take. Um, This is looking at all types of homes on the market, not just the uh, single family homes. But if we are to look at only single family homes, uh, the increase between the two, it's actually 57% increase year over year. So knowing the inventory is up 57% year over year is a little bit of a scary thought. But what might be scarier is there are some price ranges where that number is even higher. So let's break it down by price range. And I'm just going to show you guys on the screen, literally a copy and paste from the Cromford report. So I can walk you through this and you can see what these look like below 300,000 inventory is up 94% year over year. Um, for buyers, this is amazing, right? You have so many more choices under 300,000 than you did last year. Now, are there a lot of choices? Probably not, but Hey, 94% more than last year. Um, between 300 and 350, that's up 64%. 400 to 450, it's up 76%. 500 to 600, that's up 77%. One and a half to 2 million is up 64%. 5 million to 7.5 million is up by 59%. Now, there are some price ranges with the lowest increase. That's between 700 to 800, only up by 31%. Two to three million up by 28 percent and seven and a half to 10 million where we all want to be right um, up by 35 percent so um depending on what price range you're looking at as a buyer uh just know this right your options are significantly higher this year compared to last year no matter what price range you're in but some more than others and for sellers this is not good news for you this is more competition on the market And even the Cromford report is saying that, um, you know, this additional supply in the face of chronically depressed demand has given rise to a weaker market. And that's really what we're feeling. We're seeing this supply increase as demand has just kind of dwindled and stayed pretty low because of mortgage rates um, and supply is accumulating on the market. So as a seller, you have more competition out there. And I will say from experience um, for, you know, working with some buyers and also um, having some listings where we've had buyer interest, it is so incredibly slow for buyers to make decisions right now. They're very picky because it's expensive. Um, And they know they can take their time because most of these listings aren't really going anywhere. So buyers are are very particular. They're very analytical. They're very slow to make decisions. And they're they're really balancing out all of their choices. Um, So I'm speaking mostly to sellers at the moment because that can be super frustrating when you're on the market and you expect people to see the house and then want to make an offer. Sometimes they want to do three showings these days. So um, just be aware of that. It's kind of a slow burn at the moment. Now, will that change? It could. It could if we see a change in interest rates, um, which is what they're talking about right now. So let's talk about what happened last week. Jobs report came out. Labor market is losing steam. And this was good news in the face of, uh, you know, the economy, the Fed, and eventually mortgage rates as well. And we had some changes in mortgage rates that I'm going to talk about here in a second. But um, soft jobs report increases chances of lower mortgage rates. Um, An unexpected uptick in the employment rate from 4 to 4.1% showed the labor market continuing to soften, but without signaling an imminent recession. Um, So that's kind of the best news that we see some softening that what the Fed is doing is making an impact. Um, So that's super positive. That's what we want to see, but we're not getting to the point where we're moving into a recession. Um, So that was, you know, great news for the uh, direction that the Fed is trying to take the economy right now. 
They're saying today's jobs report with the past two months of inflation data puts the Fed on a solid path to a September rate cut. Now, remember, when we started the year, there was talk of potentially six rate cuts, four rate cuts. Recently, they've talked about just maybe doing one rate cut. And now we're kind of narrowing down to what their plans may be of potentially a September rate cut. Keep in mind, this is the federal funds rate. This is not the mortgage interest rate, but I'm going to talk to you about how that's all affected here in a second. Um, and so uh, we still have to see three inflation reports before we get to September. So we have a little ways to go. Um, but what's going to be happening, um, we'll have inflation data coming out on Thursdays, the CPI. Powell is going to speak this week uh, as well. So all of that is really going to affect uh, where, where things are headed um, for the next Fed meeting, which I believe is at the end of July. Um, this is kind of summarizing a lot of that. As well, um, the June jobs report showed more signs of cooling in the labor market with job growth, including revisions, uh, weaker than expected. Um, the Fed officials have become increasingly focused on the downside risks to the labor market, and the June data bolster our forecasts for the Fed to cut rates in September and at every other meeting thereafter. Um, so economic conditions are cooling, et cetera, et cetera. So that's kind of the overall feel of the expectation and what could possibly be coming of the Fed's decisions. Um, again, not the mortgage rate, but what happened with mortgage rates? Uh, mortgage rates end week lower thanks to jobs reports. So you'll probably see a lot of headlines saying that rates last week went up for the first time in the last four weeks or since May. There's a ton of headlines about that, but most of those came out right before all the jobs data came out and made some changes um, to the mortgage rate at the end of last week. Now, we didn't see a huge change, but it did go back down. So this is kind of talking about that. The average top tier 30 year fixed rate may not be back under 7% just yet, but as of Friday, it's back below the levels seen last Friday. Um, this goes on to talk a little bit about the jobs report. Um, one of the two most important pieces of scheduled monthly economic data. Um, economic data is always important, but that's doubly true these days as the Fed and the market wait for confirmation that economic growth and inflation are slowing down enough for the Fed to cut rates. Um, what I like about this article is it talks a little bit about what happened um, to affect mortgage rates. So they're saying the market often moves well in advance of the Fed when it comes to rates, meaning that you know they're not waiting for the Fed to cut rates and then mortgage rates are cut. Um, they're reacting based on the commentary and the expectations and this type of data that we're getting in from jobs report and CPI and whatnot. It says, today's jobs report wasn't especially weak, but it represented an obvious downshift compared to last month's installment. The bond market agreed as traders pushed yields moderately lower in the AM hours. So that's just an example of what happened um, last week. Bonds dictate mortgage rates. Uh, falling yields coincide with the falling mortgage rates. Again, today's move wasn't big, but it was important in the sense that it leaves the door open for another major economic report to send an even clearer message about progress towards the rate cutting goal. So I know that's a lot of information, but long story short, this was good news for rates, although we're still close to that 7% range generally. Um, you know, there is some positive um, indications that we may start to see um, some softening in rates. And if you watched my video last week, I talked a little bit about what happens in election years uh, with mortgage rates, and typically we see them start to go down ahead of an election. So with all of this information and knowing that it's an election year, the possibility of rate softening is there. So we'll see what happens. Um, so I share all of this because as a seller, there may be some opportunity for you to uh, you know, see a bit more activity on your listing if rates go down and buyers an opportunity for things to possibly get a bit more affordable for you. So on the news of rates, there is some opportunity for you to get a lower rate. I actually had clients just get a 2.75% interest rate uh, this weekend. So um, I'm going to tell you guys about that in a little bit. So hang with me here. Um, I just want to touch again on um, this article related to affordability crunch and uh, that lock-in effect that we're talking about. 
all the time. Um, the pessimism about the housing market remains. Um, and I thought this was interesting just to share what this latest uh, Fannie Mae home purchase sentiment index came out as. They're saying it decreased 2.5 points in May to 69.4, which is an all-time survey low. Only 14% of consumers said they felt now is a good time to buy a home. Um, that's down 20% from April. Um, and saying that uh, that share that said now is a good time to sell fell from 67% to 64%. Um, so I share all of this to say if you are um, selling your home right now and it feels slow and it feels like you're not making a lot of progress, that's perfectly normal. This is what's going on in the market right now um, and in Phoenix in particular. Uh, that demand has really gone down because of rates, um, although that may change sooner than later. And and, um, you know, prices haven't really come down much. Um, and as a seller, of course, you're likely reaching for the highest price you can get, uh, as sellers do. So um, there is just this disparity between what a buyer uh, is willing and able to pay right now and what a seller really needs to make a move worth it. So you're not alone if those are the things that you're feeling. And by the way, if you're getting any value from this information, make sure to hit that like button and consider subscribing so you could be part of our community going forward. We're here every Tuesday with a market update for Phoenix. So um, let's talk about what's going on in Phoenix with the Crumford Market Index. I go over this every week. We're in a balanced market at 102. Um, this index is considered to be in balance between 90 to 110. Um, demand is normal at 100, so demand is low. We're about 24% below normal. Supply is also low. Um, again, at normal around 100, we're sitting at about 26% below normal for supply. Both of these very, very close supply and demand, but both below normal. So what's been happening is we're seeing our transaction volume crash, not prices, but transaction volumes. I suppose you could consider that a crash because they are extremely low. Last year, we had the worst year for transactions since 1995, somewhere in the 90s. This year, um, we're tracking about the same, if not fewer transactions than last year. So, um, Demand's still hanging in there. Supply has been growing, as we talked about. And if supply uh, begins to outweigh demand, that's where we'll see this number fall further. And we'll move into more of a buyer's market rather than a balanced market. Now, here is the CMI for every city um, throughout the Phoenix metro area, um, or every major city that they're able to get a CMI for. You'll see a lot of red arrows. And that's what's happening. There's been a pretty big uh, you know, decrease in most cities throughout the Phoenix area of the CMI, meaning that it's moved away from a seller's market and moved further in the direction of a buyer's market. Now, I do want to point out anything over 110 is considered a seller's market. So there are a lot of cities still in a seller's market, even though they've come down from the height of their CMI from last month. The overall change month over month on average for all of these cities is 6.9%. Last week, it was 6.1%. So again, we're seeing an increase moving towards a buyer's market away from a seller's market on average for all of these cities. Now, recently I've been sharing the contract ratio as well because this shows a really good example of the heat in the market. Um, and we've got our little key on the left side here. So 30 to 60 is a balanced or warm market. And that's that greenish color. Blue is a cold market. And then um, anything that's kind of hotter, 80 to 100 and 100 to 200 is going to be, um, and, and hot is yellow. So that's going to be some of those warmer colors. So you can see these various zip codes. Um, there's a lot of green out there a few yellows, and a couple red. The red is Chandler, um, Tempe, Tolleson, and some South Phoenix areas. We've got a little 85053 here is in a hotter zip code as well. But I just want to do something real quick here. Let's just take this back a month ago because you'll be surprised, as I was, to see how much things have changed. Like, look how much more uh, heat we had in various cities throughout uh, the Phoenix area just a month ago, June 1st. Now I realize it's July 
9th. So it's been a little more than a month. Um, but, you know, not that much time has passed. And this is how quickly things have been cooling off. So again, that's where we were at June 1st. And then here's where we're at as of July 6th. Just a pretty big change to see a lot of um, that cooling off throughout the valley. So how do you get a 2.75% interest rate? Well, let me tell you a story because this is for both buyers and sellers because sellers, you may have a missed opportunity if you haven't checked to see if your mortgage is assumable. So I just had some clients this weekend find a property that had an assumable mortgage and they are going to assume that mortgage with the rate that the sellers have, which is 2.75%. Now, the key here is you have to be able to make up the difference between the purchase price and what's left on the loan. So um, you do have to have sometimes a significant down payment, a significant amount of cash to make up that gap. If you're able to do that, however, and the mortgage is assumable, you can assume that mortgage um, if the uh, the lender approves, right, or the loan servicer, they do have to approve it, so it can take some time. But you can get under contract with that being the intent, and uh, if it all works out, assume that mortgage rate. Now, most of the time, the uh, mortgages that are assumable are either VA or FHA, um, but it's a really great thing to do if you can make it work. Um, so I'm saying this to sellers too because. Is your mortgage assumable? Do you know? And if you don't know, maybe you should check on that because that could be a great marketing piece for you to be able to share with the market that it's an assumable loan at 3% or whatever it is, which is a significant savings for any buyers compared to what they would have to pay in rates today. Now, if you're interested in finding homes with assumable mortgages, check the description below. I have a link there where you can search for those types of properties. And sellers, if you are considering selling, not sure what you might be able to get for your property, check the description. We have a link for an instant home value as well. I hope all of this was helpful and I will see you guys next Tuesday for another market update.